I have a, a silver ounce here. And this, this ounce of, uh, of silver back in 2006 would buy over 40 gallons of gasoline. Today, today it'll buy almost 11 gallons of gasoline. That's preservation of value, and that's what, that's what the market has always said should be money. M money comes into effect in a natural way, not in a, an edict, not by fiat, by governments declaring it is money. Nobody prevents you from holding silver or gold if you want to. It's perfectly legal to do that. And you're also happy to, it's also perfectly fine to um, hold other currencies, uh, euros or yen or whatever else. So in that respect, you can do that. You shall not press down upon the brow of labor this crown of thorns. You shall not crucify mankind upon a cross of gold. In the period uh, after the Civil War, um, towards until World War I, um, and then really all the way into the 30s, uh, the United States was on a gold standard. And as you probably know, a gold standard is at least a partial alternative to a central bank. Uh, to a significant extent, uh, a true gold standard creates an automatic uh, monetary system. Basically, uh, money is tied to gold. Now, unfortunately, gold standards are uh, far from perfect monetary systems. Um, one small problem, which is not on the slides, but I'll just mention, is that there's an awful big waste of resources. I mean, what you have to do to have a gold standard is you have to go to South Africa or someplace and dig up tons of gold and move it to New York and put it in the basement of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. And that's a lot of effort and work. And uh, it, it's, uh, you know, it's uh, Milton Friedman used to emphasize that that was a very serious cost of a gold, a gold standard, that all this gold was being uh, 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 dug up and then put back into another hole. So there is some cost to having a gold standard. Since the gold standard determines the money supply, uh, there's not much scope for the central bank to use monetary policy to, to, to um, stabilize the, uh, the economy. Uh, and in particular, uh, under a gold standard, typically the money supply goes up and interest rates go down in periods of strong economic activity. So that's the reverse of what a central bank would normally do today. So, uh, again, because you had a gold standard which tied... Uh, the money supply to gold, there was no flexibility for the central bank to lower interest rates in recession or raise interest rates in inflation. Now, some people view that as a, as a benefit of the gold standard, taking away the discretion from central banks, and, and there's an argument for that, but it, it did have the implication that uh, there was more volatility year to year uh, in the economy under a gold standard than there has been uh, in uh, modern times. Now, one of the things that a gold standard does is it creates a system of fixed exchange rates between the currencies of countries that are on the gold standard. So, for example, um, in 1900, the uh, value of a dollar was about $20 per ounce of gold. At the same time, uh, the British set their gold standard as saying roughly, roughly four pounds, four British pounds per ounce of gold. So $20 equals one ounce of gold, four pounds equals one ounce of gold, so $20 equals four pounds. So what that's saying is basically that a pound is five dollars. So essentially, if both countries are on the gold standard, the ratio of prices between the two um, exchange rates is, is fixed. There's no variability as we see today when the euro can go up and the euro can go down. Now, again, some people would argue that's beneficial, but there is at least one problem, which is that if there are shocks or changes in the money supply in one country, and perhaps even a bad set of policies, other countries that are tied to uh, the currency of that country will also experience some of the effects of that. So fixed exchange rates between countries tend to transmit uh, both good and bad policies between those countries and take away the independence that individual countries have to... Um, uh, to manage their own monetary policy. Yet another issue with the gold standard has to do with uh, speculative attack. Now normally um, a, a, a central bank uh, with a gold standard 
uh, only keeps a fraction of the gold necessary to back the entire money supply. Uh, indeed, the Bank of England was famous for keeping, as Keynes called it, a thin film of gold. The, the British uh, Central Bank only kept a small amount of gold, and they relied on their credibility uh, to stand by the gold standard under all circumstances to, so that nobody ever challenged them about that, that issue. But if, if for whatever reason, if uh, markets lose confidence in your willingness and your uh, a commitment to maintaining that gold standard relationship, you can get a speculative attack. And this is what happened in 1931 to the British. In 1931, um, for a lot of good reasons, uh, speculators um, uh, lost confidence that the, that the British pound would stay on gold. So just like a run on a bank, they all brought their pounds to the Bank of England and said, give me gold. And it didn't take very long before the Bank of England was out of gold, because they didn't have all the gold they needed to support the money supply, and then there was essentially an, uh, they essentially had to leave the gold standard. So there was a lot of financial volatility created by this attack on the gold standard. There's a story told that a, um, a British official, Treasury official, was taking a bath, um, an aide came running in saying, we're off the gold standard, we're off the gold standard, and he said, I didn't know we could do that. <laughs> but they could, and they had to. They had no choice because there was a speculative attack uh, on the pound. Moreover, and related to this, uh, as we saw in the case of the United States, gold standard had plenty of financial panics associated with it. So uh, financial stability was not uh, always uh, assured by um, the gold standard. And finally, just one last word on the gold standard. Uh, one of the strengths that people... A site for the gold standard is that it creates a stable value for the currency, creates a stable inflation. And that's true over very long periods, but over shorter periods, maybe up to five or ten years, um, you can actually have uh, a lot of inflation, rate rising prices, or deflation, falling prices, um, in a gold standard. And the reason is that um, in a gold standard, the amount of money in the economy varies according to things like gold strikes. So, for example, if the United States, if gold is discovered in California, and the amount of gold in the economy goes up, that will cause an inflation. Whereas if the economy is growing faster and there's a shortage of gold, that will cause a deflation. So, over shorter periods of time, you frequently had um, both inflations and deflations. Over very long periods of time, decades, uh, prices were quite stable. Now, this, again, was a very significant concern in the United States. Um, in the lat latter part of the 19th century, uh, there was a shortage of gold relative to economic growth. And since there wasn't enough gold, in some sense, the money supply was shrinking relative to the economy, uh, the U.S. economy was experiencing a deflation. That is, prices were gradually falling over this period. And think about this for a moment. If you're a farmer in Kansas and you have a mortgage, with a bank, and that mortgage requires, say, a fixed payment of $20 each month, that, that amount of money you have to pay is fixed. But how do you pay that? You pay it by growing your crops and selling the crops in market. Now, if you have a deflation going on, that means that the prices of your corn or your cotton is falling over time, but your payment to the bank stays the same. So a deflation created a grinding pressure on farmers as they saw the prices of their products going down and uh, as their debt payments remained unchanged. And so farmers were squeezed by this decline in their crop prices and they recognized that um, uh, this deflation was not an accident, the deflation was being caused by the gold standard. And so William Jennings Bryan ran for president in his principal um, his principal platform, principal plank in his platform, was the need to modify the gold standard. In particular, he wanted to add silver uh, to the metallic system so that there would be more money in circulation and, and more inflation. But he spoke about this in the usual uh, very eloquent way of 19th century orators. He said, you shall not press down upon, upon the brow of labor this crown of thorns. You shall not crucify mankind upon a cross of gold. And again, what he was trying to say is that the gold standard is killing uh, honest, hard-working farmers who are trying to make their payments to 
uh, to the bank and find the price of their crops going down over time. 